You're tuning into Black and White Sports on YouTube. The no holds barred truth on sports. The main event starts now. All right, Black and White Sports supporters, we're going to talk about the Las Vegas Raiders. Got a couple more things coming off of that massive upset. Are we calling it an upset? I don't know. I don't know. One team's got seven wins. The other one's got nine wins. Okay. I mean, let's be real. I mean, one of the teams, one of the two teams, look like they have a championship defense, and that other team's not the Chiefs, okay? So uh, this is a different Raiders team than it was just eight weeks ago while Josh McDaniels was still there. Antonio Pierce is trying to get this job. And the Chiefs victory went a long way towards that. Well, Antonio Pierce has come out and made some very, very powerful comments, making it clear how he feels he is doing with this current job, this gig, on an interim basis, and exactly what his message is and how he feels about getting the permanent label. All right? Now, I think many people believe that he's going to get the job if for no other reason than the fact that he's 4-3 and three in seven games. Well, that's pretty good. And the players are certainly responding to him. We've got some social media fallout from the Raiders players sending some messages out after the Chiefs game. And, of course, the fact that they're just really playing hard, they've responded to him, and Mark Davis doesn't want to mess around and have a repeat of the Rich Basachia nightmare. Now, there's been rumors of Basachia being a candidate for this job. But look, I think probably that ship has sailed. And once again, you don't want bad blood between your players and whoever the next coach is, although I don't think they would... They're not going to have the same attitude towards... I don't think anybody the way they did Josh McDaniels. Josh McDaniels come in there and absolutely crushed and destroyed what culture the Raiders had in the camaraderie, the chemistry among those players. I mean, he's like um, he's like football repellent at this point. He is, and there are major there are rumors of Josh McDaniels being back with the Patriots. That's a real thing right now. As a quarterback's coach, as like a uh, a co-offensive coordinator, that is getting floated around. Yeah, wow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. The Raiders have played much better ball since Antonio Pierce took over as interim coach. The Raiders destroyed the Chargers, upset the Chiefs on Christmas Day. I think the most impressive part of that was going into Kansas City to do it. Vegas has been more competitive and played with more fire than under Josh McDaniels, who was fired after a 3-5 and five start to the season. The question is whether owner Mark Davis will see enough to make Pierce the full-time coach at the season's end. For his part, Pierce said job application is on the field. This guy's got a great way to talk about things. Uh, uh, it's, it's extremely fiery. You can tell it's the kind of thing players got respect. He's a line, he's an old linebacker, played for the Giants and the Skins. And these guys are responding to that, especially on defense. Quote, my resume is on the grass. What do you want? I can put up a fancy presentation. I've seen that before. I can put up stats. I can put up my resume. But the thing that happened for me was opportunity, Pierce told reporters Tuesday via Tyler Dragon, Dragon, uh, I hope Dragon, or maybe it is Dragon, of USA Today. I said this, maybe last week the worst day I was going to be as a head coach was my first day. Each day is my job, and I really take pride in growing each and every day to get better. No different than when I was a player to get better. And by the end, you look at it, whatever your career was, whatever my coaching career is, 
and you sit there and say, look, this is what he was. This is the same guy that was part of one of those teams that actually beat the Patriots with the Giants and Eli Manning, okay? And a lot of that became about the defense on that team with Antonio Pierce and Michael Strahan. And hopefully Raiders owner Mark Davis sees improvement and growth within the, our team. He sees the style and the play that he wants from the Raiders. He sees a fan base that's behind us. He sees a building that loves coming to work and loves being here. And people that's covering the team enjoying covering the team. i got to be honest. Out of all the teams I talk about on this channel, and you guys know, I mean, about half the league is about all I can handle. And I have to float around. The Raiders have been the funnest. I mean, there's no doubt about it. It, it, it has ratcheted up my enjoyment of just watching them play. And at the end of the day, we got to win. I love that. And right now, my record is our record, 4-3. and three. Two years ago, after then-interim coach Rich Bisaccia led the Raiders to the postseason in the wake of the John Gruden scandal, nobody to blame but yourself, NFL.com, there were calls for Davis to hire him full-time. Vegas opted for McDaniels, who just lasted 25 games. Wow. So, how many people were locked in on that Chiefs and Raiders game? How about more people were locked into that game on CBS than was locked in for the Niners and the Ravens on Monday Night Football? This is a PFT, and this is a lot of folks. A lot of folks. The latest installment of the game of the year, Ravens at 49ers, attracted an average audience of 27.2 million on Christmas night. A less impactful game made an even bigger impact earlier in the day. CBS announced that 29 million tuned in for the Raiders and the Chiefs the 1 p.m. Eastern Christmas game. It was, per the release, the biggest audience for a Christmas game since 1989. That year, the Vikings hosted the Bengals on Monday night in Minneapolis. The numbers generated by the two games played on Christmas Day will only increase the chances of the NFL finding a way to serve up Christmas Next year, I did a video on that. They're, they're coming out and saying they're not going to play on Christmas next year. Now, Christmas falls on a Wednesday, and look, a lot of people just don't believe them. All right? I don't believe them. I think they're going to figure it out. Although the league office has says it won't play games on the holiday if it lands on Tuesday or Wednesday, the league's broader business interest will make it difficult to surrender the captive audience of the of Christmas to the NBA. Very interesting. Uh, by the way, Fox has yet to disclose the Giants and Eagles numbers. Oh, you got to wonder, did, did they draw something embarrassing? Uh, look, the Eagles didn't look great the other day. It got kind of iffy. In the last quarter of that game, once Tyrod Taylor came in, it was like, uh-oh, this is closing up a little bit. So, we got a little reaction right here. Raiders, little little Grinch action to the Chiefs. The Raiders players, they clown the Chiefs after this game. Stole Christmas. Skull and crossbones. A.J. Cole right there. Little Grinch action. On that, uh, how about some Antonio Pierce? Ray Nation, what up? Merry Christmas, first and foremost. And guess what we brought home? One of the best gifts ever. A W. Raider Nation, stand up. Yeah, Antonio, that's why the fans love him. Mad Max. He just shook up the world. How's that feel? Hey, I'm not surprised, mother. <laughs> uh, I mean,. A little Joe Rogan. Who doesn't love a little uh, Joe Rogan action? Josh Jacobs. Zeus is a bad mother effer. Zamir White. That's right. 
Grinch stole Christmas, mother effers. Yeah, came and took it. How about this? I told him. Get it, man. It's iron. It's take it. I told him. We're going to come. You know why I feel much good? You know why I feel so good? We can't take it. We get it, son. We can't take it. Let's go. Man, this team has got the identity of a linebacker. More, more importantly, a linebacker from like 10, 12, 15 years ago. Ha ha, how about those mother effing Raiders? Merry Christmas, Raiders Nation. My dog's barking at something. I don't know what. I never said they don't have no dogs. We just got more in caps. This shit is earned, not given. Merry Christmas. Let's keep going. Some wolf action. Yes, Lord. DJ Turner. And Mad Max, the hunt continues right here. How are you? Mm. Raider Nation, from Casey, leaving with a dub. Merry Christmas. Stop playing. Big dub, we're still on the hunt. It's getting, it's getting real weird around here. Let's get, let, let's get it. Raider Nation, let's go. Yeah. So, there it is. That, that game was a massive success. It was a massive success for Antonio Pierce. The Raiders organization, Mark Davis. Look, Mark Davis has needed some positivity. We've talked about this on this team uh, with uh, from an ownership perspective before. The NFL, Roger Goodell and the NFL owners don't care for Mark Davis. They don't. He's got some, some of his daddy in him. You know, Al Davis didn't have a lot of love for... The NFL owners in the league in the shield. It's one of the reasons why Davis is trying to get Tom Brady involved from an ownership standpoint. Guys, I'll always periodically remind you of this. The NFL owners and Roger Goodell would love to see Mark Davis not in the league as an owner anymore. All right. They want Jerry Jones. They want Stan Kroenke. They want Robert Kraft. Well, if the Raiders keep winning, they keep showing out, and they've got that new stadium, Roger Goodell can't do shit. And if it's up to John Gruden, well, he's going he's gonna to tell where the bodies are buried. And I can't wait for that, frankly. Tell me what you think, black and white sports supporters. J.R. Ewing making a cameo from the background, barking it. Who the hell knows what? Peace, I'm out. Till next time. Thanks for watching the show. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to tune in next time on Black and White Sports.